Violent winds, torrential rainfall, and destructive storm surges are effects of hurricanes. They are the most powerful weather systems on the planet. These massive migratory storms release tremendous amounts of energy as they move across the tropics. Reach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! The Atlantic hurricane season starts on the 1st of June and runs through to November 30, peaking in late summer and early autumn, when temperatures in the Atlantic basin are at their warmest. The main development region varies over the season, with storms frequently forming in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, the tropical Atlantic, and in areas as far as east of the Cape Verde Islands. Hurricanes move across the Atlantic Basin due to large-scale steering currents from surrounding high and low pressure systems, primarily the Bermuda High. In the tropical Atlantic, the trade winds push storms westward but the Coriolis effect causes them to gradually curve northward in a process called recurve, and they eventually head northeastward into the mid-latitude westerly winds. Each year, an average of 10 tropical storms develop in the Atlantic Basin, many of them remaining over the ocean. A tropical cyclone requires several environmental and dynamic conditions to form. The four primary conditions are 1. Warm ocean surface with a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius or greater, as this provides a latent heat that fuels convection and sustains the cyclone's energy cycle. The depth of the warm water also matters, as shallow warm water can cool quickly, thereby inhibiting development. 2. There must be sufficient atmospheric instability and deep convection so that warm, moist air near the surface can rise and form sustained thunderstorms. 3. Low or no vertical wind shear is required, as low shear allows the storm's heat and vorticity core to remain vertically aligned and intensify. High shear, on the other hand, displaces convection and disrupts organization. 4. There needs to be pre-existing low-level disturbance with enough Coriolis force to allow rotation. The Coriolis effect is what causes hurricanes to rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. These systems form from tropical waves, also known as easterly waves, which are inverted troughs moving from east to west. There is an established pattern and sequence in formation. Tropical waves, otherwise called African easterly waves, are the seedlings for tropical storms and hurricanes across the Atlantic Basin. About 80% of all major hurricanes across the Atlantic were formed originally from African easterly waves, these tropical waves that come across the Atlantic Basin. They form when warm, dry air from the Sahara Desert moves south and combines with moist air from the African jungles to the south. That air combines and then mixes across the Central African continent and forms a jet stream right over Central Africa. Then these clusters of showers and thunderstorms move across the continent and then out near the Cabo Verde Islands and then across the Atlantic Basin. We typically see about 60 tropical waves or so cross the Atlantic Basin during the tropical season. After a tropical wave emerges from Africa, it would typically take about 12 to 14 days or so before one of these waves could potentially reach the United States. Now, most of them either harmlessly turn out to sea or just remain weak and travel across the Caribbean. Sometimes you can have five or six tropical waves moving across the Atlantic Basin at one time. And of course, not all of them will develop. Some of them, they run into dry air and they run into wind shear and they just fall apart. Other ones, they find a Goldilocks zone where there's low wind shear. In the early stages, warm moist air rises over pockets of warm water, creating thunderstorms. These areas are called tropical disturbances or invests, which is an area of investigation. Invests are weather systems that sometimes become depressions or storms. Invest is short for investigation. Once the National Hurricane Center declares an invest, computer models will be run to look at future track possibilities as well as the potential future intensity. 
Sometimes, to get even more detailed information, the hurricane hunters will schedule a mission to go in and see what the circulation status is. However, there have been many cases where with additional data, it's determined that a system will wind up being nothing to worry about. Upper level winds and the surface winds then begin to converge in the cluster of thunderstorms, forming a circular pattern of clouds known as a tropical depression. This is the area of low pressure needed for the system to strengthen. When the winds exceeds 39 miles per hour, the depression becomes a tropical storm, and the system is given a name from a predetermined alphabetical list of alternating male and female names. These lists are recycled every six years. As the tropical storm becomes more organized, more air rushes to the center of low pressure. Atmospheric pressure continues to fall, and winds reach 74 miles per hour, a hurricane is officially born and is given a Category 1 rating on the Sapphire Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale, which is a 1 to 5 rating scale based only on a hurricane's maximum sustained wind speed. On the scale, a Category 1 hurricane produces winds of 74 to 95 miles per hour. A Category 2 system produces winds of 76 to 110 miles per hour. A Category 3 system is considered a major hurricane and produces winds of 111 to 129 miles per hour. A Category 4 system produces winds of 130 to 156 miles per hour, while any winds over 157 miles per hour are designated Category 5. As more warm air is converted into the energy that powers the hurricane's circular winds, they spin around a low pressure center called the eye which can provide a 20 to 30 mile radius of eerie calm. This is caused by dawn drafts of dry air. Inside the storm, bands of rain up to 300 miles long meet the eye wall, which is the most violent section of the system. The eye wall is a towering ring of clouds with some of the fastest wind speeds of the hurricane. Here, winds of up to 200 miles per hour spirals upward. Fully formed hurricanes may stretch over 500 miles in diameter and may reach a height of 9 miles. Generally, the right side of the hurricane is the most dangerous in terms of storm surge and winds. While hurricanes are categorized based on their wind speed, this isn't always the most dangerous component. That honor goes to storm surges. Storm surges are caused when winds from an approaching hurricane push water towards the shoreline up to 20 feet above the sea level and can extend for miles inland. 90% of all hurricane deaths are the result of storm surges. Some storms, while violent, are also extremely volatile, going through many different phases and stages in their lifespan. Some are very slow to develop, while others go through rapid intensification. Some meander along very slowly, some even become stationary for a while, and others have rapid forward speed. Hurricanes are often erratic, becoming disorganized before reorganizing and strengthening again, especially during eyewall replacement cycles. During an eyewall replacement cycle, this outer eyewall develops, which then causes the inner eyewall to weaken, and that will collapse back down and shrink to return back to a single eyewall. This whole process can take over a day. Hurricanes do not maintain maximum strength during these cycles. That causes the intensity of the hurricane to go dramatically down, but often only temporarily, because once that inner eye wall is gone, now the outer eye wall can take charge. You might have just as strong of a hurricane that you did before. But there's another method to the madness. Oftentimes, it's a mechanism for the storm to grow, so the wind field might expand in size. Not every hurricane goes through one of these cycles, and some can go through multiple. Typically, it's the strong hurricanes that have the eye wall replacement cycles. There's a category three, four, and five. Eye wall replacement cycles are bad news because of its larger size after the cycle. It's much more capable of producing strong winds over a larger area and is a much bigger storm surge producer. While one of these just before landfall can help weaken a hurricane's strongest winds. When the storm comes ashore, those stronger winds cover bigger area, ultimately impact more people, can mean more rainfall, can mean more storm surge. Um, so it's sort of a blessing and a curse when it comes to eye wall replacement cycles. This makes them a bit hard to predict and track, 
even though science and technology have improved significantly over the years. The time to warn for a hurricane has improved in the last 100 years. A hurricane watch can be activated within 48 hours of landfall. A weather warning could come from the Weather Prediction Center. You can look at past hurricanes, compare with what the, cur the, the current one is, like central pressure, how big it is, um, and get analog cases uh, and see how the rainfall patterns looked in those past cases and use that to help us forecast as well. Being prepared and never waiting until the last minute is always the best option, no matter how fast or slow a storm is moving. These systems are tracked using the cone of uncertainty. The cone of uncertainty represents the probable track of the center of a tropical cyclone, not the definite track, the probable track. The storm center could move right along the middle of the cone, but it could also go to either edge, the left side or the right side. And when you see that cone getting wider, guys, it's not necessarily because the storm's going to get bigger, but it's telling us there's more uncertainty the further out into the future that we look. And you really should also think about the track of the storm as one thing, and the size of the storm as another. With large storms, there can be impacts really far away from the center of the storm and well beyond the cone. While hurricanes cause mass destructions like other natural hazards, they serve an important purpose within the global ecosystem. Hurricanes help to regulate our climate by moving heat energy from the tropics to temperate and polar regions, helping to keep the planet's temperature stable. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them!